Hello folks, it's Clinton Moss here with Gunner Energy Services. We're continuing on in the series, Pulling Back the Curtain, where I'm going to be talking about complex completions, well control, and well bore intervention. Now it's Friday night, sometimes I know the kids get restless, you can't find anything on Netflix, and I said I can't disappoint the fans, I gotta give them what they want, part two of Intro to Ranging. And here we go though, let's try to make this interesting for you guys. First let's review part one real quick. Okay. What is ranging? Uh, just look at uh, the very first little diagram I have. It's determining the relative position, distance and direction, okay, so a distance and a bearing, downhole, okay, and we want to do this to intersect a well or stay a certain distance away, for example, okay, so that's what ranging is all about. Now, number two is the types of ranging. So I discussed um, magnetic ranging and acoustic ranging. Now, there are some other types, they're not quite commercialized yet. So maybe we'll get into those later on down the road, but we'll just keep our discussions to uh, the commercial uh, deployments these days. Okay, now let's get into the subject matter of this video. I told you that I was going to break down ranging into uh, the two primary magnetic ranging types, okay? And then I was going to talk about dependency on access ac accessing the well or not, okay? So first of all, active magnetic ranging in figure number three. Uh, what's that all about? So with active magnetic ranging, we're actually going to physically uh, create a magnetic field. We're going to flip a switch, turn up some current, or spin, for example, a, a rare earth magnet. Perhaps we're going to deploy a solenoid in a well, something that's going to generate a magnetic field. So every time we want to make a measurement, we're literally putting energy into the system. We're turning something on. And that's what I'm showing here in, in number three. Number three is a typical relief well application and we're going to inject current with an electrode. So we turn something on, the current makes a magnetic field, and there'll be subsequent videos about how that's done, and then we sample that magnetic field. So we activate. That's an active magnetic ranging technique. Okay? Now, in illustration number four, it's the same situation. It's a relief well, but now we're going to use passive magnetic ranging. Okay, so what's passive? Well, we're going to use the residual magnetism of the drill pipe. It's already present. We didn't, you know, at the moment that we took the measurement, create that. It was uh, present just by virtue of the fact that the casing or the drill pipe in the target well is a ferromagnetic material. So we're looking for uh, that magnetic field attributable to that. Okay, so that's active ranging versus passive ranging. Now, finally, we have access dependency versus access or no access ranging. Okay, so in number five here, we see our access dependent ranging. That's where we want to put something in a well bore. We need to um, either have a source or a receiver in that well bore, and we're going to detect that or detect from it. So in other words, or what I have illustrated here, is we're going to put a magnetic ranging solenoid uh, that will create a magnetic field, and then we can sample it in the adjacent well. But you can see I have to physically intervene or put something in there. It depends, this technique, on me having access. Then, uh, in number six, we have no access ranging. So what are we doing here? Well, I've pictured, once again, the relief well application. So we've lost the rig, there's an uncontrolled release. We can't, obviously, put something in the target well. So what do we do? We use current injection, in this case, downhole, uh, to create the magnetic field, and that's the field that we subsequently sample. So, just to put it all together, uh, you know, I'm showing uh, an access independent technique in number two. I'm showing an access independent technique in three, in four, and in five, this is access dependency. So, access dependent magnetic ranging in that particular case. Okay, folks, I hope this kind of clarified the nomenclature, the parlance of industry, if you will. And with these building blocks, now we can talk about these specific techniques how they work, uh, the ins and outs of deployment, how we plan to deploy these various tools. So it's with these fundamentals, it's with this basis now that we can approach the rest of, uh, uh, the, rest of the, the video series. So folks, I really appreciate you tuning in. Um, stay engaged. I love your comments that come in on LinkedIn, your comments on YouTube videos. If you have specific case studies, uh, remember, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to you reaching out and, and tell me what you want uh, to cover, and I'll make sure I get to that right away. It's Clinton Moss with Gunner Energy Services. Thanks, folks.